So welcome back to Learning Creative Learning. It was great during the past week, we got a chance to read all of the childhood object uh, descriptions that people put up. There was more than 100 of them. I know I really enjoyed reading through all of them. That was actually hard to read through all of them, I thought. <laughs> One thing that I thought was really great was people seeing connections, being surprised that, oh, you also yeah. like that. Or other connections, for example, Linda Garman shared a red stapler that she was sick in bed and had this stapler and actually got very engaged in what she talked about when it was jammed, rebooting it and yeah. really getting to know that stapler and feeling really empowered. So that led Deb Ashman to say, that her son is totally obsessed with our stapler and now I can't for the life of me see why I keep taking it away from him. Mm -hmm. Today when he gets home from school, he will become the owner of this fine tool. <laughs> so a little change there in perspective once you start seeing it from the eyes of a kid who really took a liking and really learned something from it. Yeah, I do think one thing you see in a lot of the stories is that connections to objects are often intertwined with connections to people. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's one thing you saw there. Uh, and I saw that in another one of the stories that I really liked was the story about the left-handed desk. This is from Cecilia Trevino, who wrote about the left-handed desk that when she was growing up and she was left-handed, at the time, she felt that oftentimes in society, you were made to feel as if there was something wrong with you if you're left-handed. I think she said she had an older sister who was forced to write with her other hand, her right hand, uh, even though she was naturally left-handed. Uh, and her father, in order to you know, help support her in her left-handedness, brought this left-handed desk into her school. It wasn't just that he got it at home for her, but brought it into school to try to normalize it, that there was nothing wrong with being left-handed. That you're, that, And so as Cecilia wrote about it, it was partly that she appreciated this on a practical level, but also it helped make a stronger bond with her father, that her father cared about this and was thinking about how she fit in you know, with, with the rest of the class. So I, I liked it because it was both about how she fit into society and to the culture around her, but then also about her special bond with her father. Yeah, the, the one that I kind of stood out for me, and, and actually there were many that brought back a lot of memories, yeah. which we was really nice. We printed out a whole bunch yeah, that you can't know. see There's here. Like it was really pile. hard to decide which ones. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, it kind of, I think it dates me or us a little bit like we see some of those like tape recorders and the, yeah. the images make me really sentimental but the one i picked is um is chalk uh, and a few people talk about chalk in different ways but the the one that really resonated with me was that you draw kind of imaginary worlds on the on the street and then you live you occupy them with other kids mm -hmm. so in in my uh, i i remember drawing kind of sports games but kristen swanson who who posted this picture was talking more about kind of imaginary worlds that she created with with her friends. They weren't so much sports related, um, but it. it yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah you, you, you reminded me a graduate student from our group, Aman Milner. His PhD dissertation he titled it "Computer as Chalk," and it was touching on some of these same themes because when he thought of chalk, it was the same way in his childhood. Chalk was an expressive medium. It was a way that it sort of gave you a voice. You know, whether you were you know creating a tool like a sports game, like a hopscotch board. You know, or you were you know, doing artwork, it was a way for you to express yourself. Uh, and that's the way he, uh, and it was part of your everyday life. And that's what he would like computers to be today. It's something that should be part of your everyday life and a way of expressing yourself. And I also like you know, that chalk sometimes is seen as just something for the teacher to use to communicate ideas to the class. And he didn't want chalk to be seen that way. He wanted the chalk of his childhood that it was democratizing chalk. And he thought computers also shouldn't just be for someone to deliver information, but to be democratized. I think that also that the fact that his dissertation brings in the physical and the digital, yeah. right, is part of it. Because again, that's where we get sentimental. And I guess I was just so impressed where someone from a pile of mimeograph sheets or graph paper, sometimes things that seem really simple, mm -hmm. or the toy piano that Heloisa shared, from that, they, yeah. they made a lot out of something really small. Yeah, I do think from yeah. the ordinary, things that seem ordinary. I also love the one about the paper. Those are sort of like these piles of paper became the raw materials of all this creativity and imagination. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so 
Yeah, well, maybe one last thought is yeah. I, I noticed that many of the posts start with I couldn't think of a childhood <laughs> object and then they would go on and describe a wonderful <laughs> childhood object. And yeah, so or made, several, yeah. Or several. <laughs> yeah. And it made me think that we're so used to kind of getting it right. Mm -hmm. Like even even for me yeah. when I thought about this, I couldn't think of a childhood object. And it's like there's we've we we're trying to answer to this expectation, but actually if we let go of this a little bit, it turns out that both we're meeting the expectations, but also we're just coming up with great ideas and um, very valid contributions. Well, I hope we can keep this spirit alive through the you know yeah. you know as we continue with learning creative learning about taking the ideas we're discussing and making them personal. I think that that's what overall mm -hmm. that I really like about the childhood objects is people take the ideas about creative learning and make it personal about you know their own experience. And hopefully people can continue to keep that in mind in the ongoing discussions as we look ahead. So maybe, maybe we can give it a little overview about what we're going to be doing in yeah. today's session. Because you know, the theme of today's you know, session is uh, projects. It's one of the four Ps that we talked about last, last week, project, peers, passion, and play. We'll focus on projects. And we'll have a series of videos in today's session. First will be Natalie and myself talking about uh, what's special about projects from our point of view. What we see is the learning opportunities that are opened up by working on projects. And we'll give some examples of different types of uh, projects that we've seen young people working on and ways of supporting them and, and what we, the learning that went on. And then we'll have another video where we talk together with someone who worked on one of the projects we've worked on, the Scratch Project. Uh, and we talk with uh, Joran Lowers, who started using Scratch when he was 12 years old and is now a freshman here at MIT. Mm -hmm. So we talked with him about his experiences creating projects with Scratch and the learning experiences he had as he was using our tool of Scratch to create projects and talk about his experiences in, in that. So after those couple of videos, We'll then do a breakout session, and we'll we'll try again this week. Hopefully, the technology <laughs> will work. So we'll try the breakout where everybody will get a chance to break out into small groups, and we'll you know in, in some discussion around projects. We'll come to that later, and then that'll be towards the end. Then we'll bring people back to introduce the activity of the week for next week. Mm -hmm. uh, so the same in the same spirit of this week's childhood object, we'll suggest a new activity for the upcoming week.